Romans chapter 10 verses 4. If you're there, you say amen. Romans chapter 10 verses 4. The Bible says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believeth. Christ is the end of the law. Are you hearing me? That means if you have Christ, you are at the end of the law. You're past the law. You're now with Christ. Uh, who understands what I'm saying? Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That means when you receive the righteousness of God in Christ, and Christ becomes your righteousness, you've gotten to the end of the law. Somebody say, I'm at the end of the law. The next verse says, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Underline the word doing, right? The man who doeth those things shall live by them. So the law puts men at the place of doing, 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 doing. And the next verse says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. The righteousness of the law doeth. The righteousness which is of faith speaketh. Who has understood what I'm saying? The righteousness of the law, it doeth. It does. It's after works. It's after whatever you do to become right by God. But the righteousness, which is of faith, it speaketh. Who understands what I'm saying? It speaketh. So, when it says that the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh, the righteousness of the law doeth, it means... By the law, you're righteous by everything you do and you're not righteous by some things you don't do or you're righteous by the things you don't do or, I mean, in the sense doing certain things but you're also unrighteous because of certain things that are not done. You are on the stage of what you do and what you don't do. If you do, right, if you do A, B, C, D, you are considered righteous according to the law. But when it comes to the righteousness of faith, it speaketh. Your justification is in speaking. Your, 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 your health is in what you speak. Your finances are in what you speak. Your, your marriage is in what you speak. Your relationships are in what you speak. Your business is in what you speak. Your ministry is in what you speak. Are you hearing me? It speaketh on this wise. It speaks this way. It says, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend in heaven? That's an, a work. That is to bring Christ down from above. That is a work. Next verse. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is a work. Right? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. That is a labor. That's a work. But what says it? What does it say? What does the righteousness of faith say? The Bible says, The word is nigh thee. Praise the Lord. Even thy in thine mouth. The word is nigh thee, and that word is in your mouth. That is what the righteousness of faith says. The word that is in your mouth is the word that saves you. And in thine heart, and the word that is in your heart. That is, he called it the word of faith. And he says, that is our gospel, which we preach. He says, that is our gospel. That is the center of what we preach. The word of faith. The word of faith which we preach praise god so it's no longer the work of faith it's the word of faith when the word of faith comes the works follow here paul jesus god is not saying that we we put we we destroy or the dishonor or are disillusioned about the works or whatever the, the the things that are done in the pleasing of god no but he's cognizant of the fact that firstly, you learn the way to speak with your mouth. You learn the way to confess with your mouth. The righteousness of faith speaks on the word which is near you. That is the word, the word near you is defined as the word which is in your mouth and the word which is in your heart. Who is understanding what I'm saying? And he says that is the word of faith 
comma, which we preach. In fact, in the literal translation, the center of our gospel and the message we preach. That means the holistic sum of the New Testament dispensation is aimed in the word of faith. Maybe let me explain a few things. If you are a reader of church history, E.W. Kenyon, I think he was born in 18 something and then he passed away, I think, in 1948. If you read the works of E.W. Kenyon, you'd, you'd, nobody can argue that he is the originator of what present truth calls the word of faith movement. Okay? Now I'm going to speak to you as mature. I'm going to speak to you as though you're in Bible school. Is that okay? He was the originator of the word of faith movement. E.W. Kenyon. Almost everything we read now in present day that we know to be a faith thing if you read it through the fathers of the faith, you're going to realize almost every area they are touching, E.W. Kenyon touched. And later, a few guys later. And then later in the 50s, the idea and mind came through the man of God called Kenneth e. Hagin. How many of you know Kenneth e. Hagin? You've heard of him. I've spoken about him because for me, those were the bonds I fell onto because I didn't have an opportunity to see him. I think he passed in 2003. Those are the bonds I fell onto. What do I mean by that? I mean, you remember how the generation of Elijah passes on to the generation of Elisha and then Elisha dies without passing his mantle to the next dispensation. And now I'm talking about a transgenerational anointing. And then one soldier one time comes and then he's dead and then they throw his body on the bones of Elisha and he leaves. But did he simply receive the anointing of Elisha or he simply received the power to heal the sick? And probably that man received power to heal the sick and that was, I mean, I mean power to heal and leave. The power that raises dead men, it, it entered his body and it received life. That, that, that is how anointed Elisha was. If you think about it for a moment, that a man's bones are long lived, but if somebody simply puts a dead body, dead, dead, without oxygen, cold, a stone, they throw that body on the bones, and a man lives. Who understands what I'm saying? But it's so sad that that man simply received life. It's not written anywhere in scripture that that man went beyond life. Are you hearing me? Now, when I'm saying that those are the bones of which we fell, some of us in the first earlier years of the gospel and the anointing, we were very confused young men, but with a very great anointing. If you're talking about the gifts of the spirit, they were operating. In fact, for me, my primary years, you'll ask Apostle Emma, they'll tell you, my primary years was literally deliverance, prophecy, prophecy, deliverance. I was not tying on it. It was tied on me. Still is. Praise God. And, and I remember many days, uh, he'll tell you where we used to go for overnights and prophesy on people for like three, four hours. And it gets deeper every hour. By the time it's five, you've almost prophesied on the whole church. Because then the churches we used to go to were 100, 200 people. And then people are crying somewhere on the floor. The anointing is flowing. And then it goes deep and deep and deep. And then you go home and then you're like, Phew, God has walked through me. But there was quite something missing in there with with our lives and i've seen it very con very continuously in the church of this part of the world i've seen that many of them have not taken time to reach out history to understand why we preach what we preach are you hearing me so when you start to teach certain things you already look strange to them who are you are you that guy is cult he's teaching things that are strange but what is strange about what we're teaching are we teaching outside the word no. But you see, many of them have not been exposed beyond their four boxes of ministry. Many of them have not been exposed beyond the doctrine. And that is why I don't understand how people can say that they are going to regulate faith. All pastors should go to, 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 to Bible school. They are not telling us which Bible school. Which one? 
are you going to also regulate which bible school is true because again we're going to have trouble in people saying no this one is 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 real this one is not real praise god some of us went to the bible school of the holy ghost not certified by man are you hearing me and i know many guys with bible school papers and and they're, they're killing people they're robbing the church they're destroying lives yet they have all these degrees and masters in degrees it will not happen read my lips word of faith praise god it will not happen you can't you can't regulate the anointing praise god unless you want us to hear rebel shaka you understand but but we will pray we will pray we know god i rest still people we will pray we know god we know god praise god anyway so I'm saying that when kenneth e. hagin comes through he develops the work which ew kenyon had started and he comes now to be called the father of the word of faith movement but we all give respect and honor to ew kenyon because Kenneth was visiting Kenyon's works, it's evident, or at least he was speaking from what Kenyon had already brought to the world. There could have been men before that, but all we know now and can locate by paper is Kenyon, the right. And then later, guys like Charles Caps uh, come through, the list is endless. The, then the present Drew, the truth guys come through, the oral Roberts come through, uh, you know, many, many of those guys then start coming through, and then, you know, the later generation of Word of Faith, many of them just come through some people like the Benny Hins bore a big percentage of it but then they stay a little bit traditional in some form and uh, but the G G John G. Lexis were word of faith all of those guys if you really read it, read their works and then probably the present truth the Edipos, Adeboyos, they get it from Idahosa, Idahosa gets it from T.L. Osborne, T.L. Osborne is word of faith 100% you know, the list is endless. There are kilometers of, of Christ's embassy and all, all of those men are word of faith people. You, if you hear, you see Kenyon, you see Kenyon. But you see, in every dispensation, you'll notice this one thing, that there's always an advancement in every generation. And then they, we, we get to know more. We get to know more. We get to know more. But that's our line. I want you to know that's our line. That's our line. Tell your neighbor, that is our line. Praise God. E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth E. Hagen. Praise God. Of course, like I said, in different ministries, you'll see different forms. Some go off here, some vi off there. Some go the other day. So that's why for me, majorly, I connect more to the Kenyons and the Hagens more than, than, than many of our then present and more. Because some of them, again, when I look through, in some aspects, in some aspects, not all, in some aspects, some have not, some have gotten into another understanding not necessarily wrong but i don't understand it so i you understand what i'm saying they, 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 I'm, I'm not saying they're necessarily wrong but if i don't understand them i don't push what i don't understand you, you get my point there are certain things that creep in then and away us even in the movement and 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 but i've learned this one thing as a man of god and you all should always know that that the the message is suckered the method is not okay never forget that the message is suckered but the method is not that means methods change forms of ministry change some people minister differently from others some people do certain things differently from other people you understand what i'm saying maybe you're going to go to a church and then they're going to emphasize money a certain way that's their method methods are not suckered you understand but the message is and maybe you come here and you're going to find i'm not talking about money you know probably you're going to come in a partner's meeting and I'm not going to recognize the first great two, three, four givers. But there's a reason why I cannot recognize the two, three, four givers, the best four, five givers. Because biblically, I don't understand how you, 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 you weigh that. You understand? If a guy gives $4 million, I'm just giving you an example, and he has $10 million, and there's somebody who has 10 million shillings, and they've given it all. Hello? How then do you tell me that the person who gets four million out of the ten million dollars is a bigger giver than someone who gave all the ten which they had? We attach value to the giving. And the Lord who sees you give in secret, he will reward you openly. I think when it comes to finances, 
it's healthier to keep discretion on the giver because they deserve a certain reward by God. It has to come full and we rob it off them when we present them a certain way. We have to avoid that. Praise God. Did you understand what I'm saying? Or at least if you've seen in the ministry when I say that's a big giver, I don't tell how much. I don't disclose how much. No, I talk about the heart. Praise God. Anyway, so like I said, some methods are might be different from the way we do things or maybe the church you went to or came from service comes before prayer prayer comes before service praise comes before worship worship comes before prayers you understand in some services the pastor attends this the pastor doesn't attend that the message must be suckered the method is not you understand they have their own everybody has their own revelation of how they run ministry and um, so for us majorly we don't we don't focus on the method we focus on the message the message is key the word of god praise god but now let me go a bit i wanted to give you that generation so you understand that when we talk about the word of faith okay we're not simply talking about we're talking about something that has been tested you understand if you see how dw kenyon died if you see how kenneth e hagen died if you see how smith wigglesworth died if you see how um uh the, the lesser sumerals die if you see how the Howard carters die if you see how the all robots die you realize that all of these word of these men majority of them they die the same way and their ministries by the time they pass they finish well there's a reason they don't just die no they finish well you understand so when you're following a certain don't just you know sometimes people say oh you know no no you know all the churches are the same you know sometimes i pray here and then sometimes you, you're you you're not yet come on you don't just pray from everywhere you understand sometime one time somebody came and then had me preach and said you know you preach like so and so when they spoke of the preacher i was like oh my god the guy they're talking about doesn't even know my speech speak my doctrine but the pastor says, wow, you speak like... He mentioned the name. I will not mention because it might be your favorite preacher on TV. <laughs> I was like, what? I was offended. I was like, but I don't agree with that guy. You understand? Eh? But then the person says, you preach like... I said, oh, okay. But you see, again, even if I don't connect with him a certain way, there's a uniformity of spirit that maybe this person saw and connected with. Again... The message is suckered. The method is not, okay? But maybe at that point, there's something that I hit and that person hit at that particular point. Uh, and and you, they, that person should have said, you've said something, I had so and so preach. But you can't say, you preach like Banange. You have to analyze all my sermons from Genesis to Revelation to say, that I preach like, you understand? But it's not wrong at all. It's actually beautiful to have a certain unity of the faith and have certain things that are common in the body of Christ as men and ministers of the gospel. We believe in the unity of the faith. A couple of years later, you'll see us connecting to certain ministries, not because we are 100% agree. And I expect you to be mature about it. You might observe certain things and say, oh, yeah, 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 Poso. What is that? You understand what I'm saying? But you see, you are mature enough to tolerate certain things. You know the truth. You don't show out and then, you know, with, with anger. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Just smile. Let it go. Learn your lessons and move on. Praise God. Perhaps we're also learning a few things and maybe one day we will be corrected. That's all right. We have the humility to be restored. Back to the word of faith. So when the Bible says that the word of faith, when, when we talk about the word of faith, okay, we, the center here is saying that it's very important firstly to establish yourself as a talking person it's very expedient to firstly establish yourself as a woman and man of the word you understand then when your word is in you and it is established in you and you speak it and you you at least your mouth does not err right the bible is very clear the bible says that he that bridles his tongue right when the bible speaks about controlling the tongue you know when the speak of the 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 the, 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 the bible speaks of of tongues he speaks of a place of 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 of, of mastery right yeah i think you can begin from the scripture which speaks of many of you be masters or something projector hey aha uh-huh. 
the Bible says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive a greater condemnation. You know why he says that we should not be many masters? Because we shall receive a greater condemnation. The condemnation is not on the master. The condemnation is on mastery. You understand? But there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ. For the law of the life-giving spirit has given them, uh, has set them free from the life of law of sin and death. When we are talking about mastery, we are not talking about the law of sin and death. All right? We are talking about the excellence of power. All right? We are talking about, let me explain it a little bit deeper so you understand. They are very good preachers in the world, right? But when you hear the spirit of this preacher or minister of the gospel, you sense that they are good, but learners, they are learning. They are still adopting. They are still getting in two certain zones of the spirit but they are deep they are wonderful of course not everyone in this room i expect that you can tell the difference because some of you your mind tunes on when the man is saying and 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 and, and i make make a confession like philemon 1 6 the communication of your faith becomes effectual through the acknowledgement of every good thing to Jesus Christ. oh apostle grace says that and then you tune on and you're probably in a meeting and then another man says you feel me and one six says the communication of your faith and you, go, oh, it speaks like a you understand it but you see <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying because you have simply had somebody quote the scripture that i'm quoting Huh? but it's deeper than that the communication of my faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging yes my mouth does it but have I gotten into the place where I have mastered what I'm preaching let me tell you what mastery does it brings certain results you understand it brings certain results I was talking to a group of pastors over the weekend and this man, this man I was talking to, I told him, look, sometimes you find a minister say, you know what, it's not about numbers. And I look at him and say, what do you mean? It's not about numbers. We were anointed to depopulate hell. We were called by God to preach the gospel in the whole world that will save them. He told us, occupy until you come. Are you hearing me? The son of God came, and when he sat, numbers came. How do you tell me that it's not about numbers? What do you mean? Oh, you know this concept of mega churches. What do you mean by, if you're talking of mega churches, Christ had one. 5,000 men are following him without food. Come on, somebody. 5,000 men are following him without food. What do you mean it's not about numbers? It's about numbers. It's about people. Maybe you say that some ministers abuse that place. Yes, deal with a minister. But regardless of whether the minister is funny or not, when I see a funny man of God, a funny minister, having thousands, there is pain because he's leading many to hell. Hello? So anyway, let's go to the scripture. When we're talking about mastery here, we're talking about you can be a good preacher, but you, you've not gained mastery in it, right? You can be a good worshipper, but you've not understood mastery in worship. You can be a good business person, but you have not gotten into the mastery of it. Yes, the results is one, but the maturity of that mastery exists. You understand? It is worked in you. It is not just impulsed. Right? When Paul says, I would not speak several of the things which Christ has wrought in me. He says, you make the Gentiles obedient in word and deed. That means when you are in the level of mastery, men, you, men, you, you, you cause men to, to both do and speak what you're, what you're teaching. Their tongue changes and their actions change, change. Right? But you see the process? Word deed deed does not precede word the word precedes the deed 
You understand? They firstly learn how to speak right and then they act right. If you are a master in, in healing, right? You don't heal the sick. You teach men how to heal the sick. That's mastery. If you are a master in finances, you don't have a lot of money. No. You teach men how to make money. If you have a mastery in the prophetic, you don't prophesy accurately. You teach men how to flow in the prophetic. If you carry a mastery of, 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 of wisdom, you don't just carry wisdom on you. You put wisdom on everybody who comes in your contact. That's mastery. Mastery has a place of teaching. Of course, some theologians and many men of the spirit have said that when a man has done 10,000 hours under the light of a particular field, that man can be regarded a mastery. I agree to it to a very large extent, but not to the fullest extent because we don't know how many hours Apollos had done before Priscilla and Aquila called him aside to tell him that the way you're going is wrong and they show him the better way of the gospel. We, I don't think Jesus did 10,000 hours for mastery, but I believe that there is a process and the due, the due experience that comes when a man has walked a certain place. There's a price. The grace of God helps that man pay the price. It's in there. You, you don't just wake up eh, and then tomorrow everyone is understanding you and then you have a ministry and you're standing. What people don't see are the years before. You understand? What people don't understand are the years of preparation. But everybody has their own due and everybody has their own process. If you skip a certain process, you will be thrown back to it. Want to run all the way you want. I see some young men rushing to going up. But they don't know that the shortcut of the spirit is to follow the principles in their steps and patterns as they have to be followed. There is no shortcut of skipping four classes in the spirit. But there is a shortcut of understanding each class quicker. That's the only shortcut by God. But you don't go beyond the principles. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Anyway, back to what I'm saying. That when we're talking about the mouth and the bridling of the tongue, he says, for in many things we offend. Huh? Are you seeing that that's the second verse? In many things we offend. James is talking about the ultimate mastery. If any man offend not in word, give me the amplified of verse 2. He says, if for we all stumble and fall and often in many things. All underline of you judge others. And if anyone, the Bible says, does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things. The Bible says he is a fully developed character and a perfect man. Ooh, do you see how the Bible defines a perfect character? Do you see how the scriptures define a perfect character? The perfect character is not the man who is yet perfect in the character, the physical, moral character. That does not come first. Who is following what I'm saying? That does not come first. What comes first is a man who learns not to offend in speech. Never, never, underline, never says the wrong things. The Bible says he's a fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. That means when you learn not to say the wrong things, you're fully developed. That's a mastery. Mastery is when you don't say the wrong things, whether you're joking or not. You understand? Whether you're joking or not. You preach to someone for years. And then one time they call you after five years. Was, <laughs> I'm tired. Why? Oh, apostle, I have... No, 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 no. Listen, it's not about what you're going through here. Understand this. We're dealing with mastery. 
we're dealing with mastery. Do you know why mastery is condemned? I'll explain why mastery is condemned a lot. Because at a certain point, when you speak, you start having certain results. And when you start having a certain result, and then you reach a certain level of a certain result, right? It takes too much error in the spirit to take back your word. Or, some of you, it's not that you have yet seen results as they ought to be seen. But even though you have not seen the results fully, huh? you are somewhere spiritually. There are things you don't simply confess anymore. Or, on the other hand, there are things that you've confessed over the years and these things have built a certain thing in your spirit. It might not yet be manifested fully for everybody to understand it, but over time, for example, if you're believing God for something and you've been confessing, we thank you, it's done. We thank you, it's done. You have built 10 years. You're closer to that miracle than ever before. It's probably three seconds away, right? And this is 10 years of faith. Let me show you where the condemnation comes. When you get to that end like that, and then you say, ah, it seems we're not going to have to children. You, you've been confessing thanks with, for 10 years. And then on the 11th year, you say, it seems we're not going to have children. You know what you've done? You've said everything that has been built the last 10 years is useless. Right? If I build the very things I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. This is not that you stole money or what. No, you have built again the very things which you destroyed with your lips. You've been confessing divine health and confessing divine health and confessing divine health and then one day you wake up and then you say, I am sick. You kill all the 20 years of your And some of you realize, many of you actually, that when you started the confession right, the results started to come through. It may be that they have not been coming as you want them, but at least there is some proof that you're going somewhere on this thing. I know people in this room here who doctors told you can't live without this drug. And right now they are living for years without those drugs and there is nothing on them, nothing. They are not sick, they are not bound, they are not, they are not weak in any way. It's one thing for you to learn that confession, but anticipate a future of where your body will fight to a certain point and then give in finally. Yeah, it's not yours, darling. But you see, it's one thing to think that, okay? That is the attack of the devil. He's speaking to you. To see how you're going to respond. A man of the word of faith. At that particular point when the thought comes. At that particular point when the thought comes. Huh? The problem with many of you. The error is. You feel it. Then you swallow it. Then you say let me change my thoughts. No don't change. Before you change. There is a battle here you've left. Hallelujah. There is something that is unfinished. How could you come in my head and convince me otherwise from what the God of I, I serve said? You come and say, devil, in the mighty name of Jesus and the righteousness of God in Christ. I cannot fall sick. I don't fall sick. That is not my report. You're fool. You're fool. And you leave it there. What if he repeats it immediately after? You repeat it. What if he says it again? You tell the devil, you know what? We can do this all day. I have the mouse. I'm not dead, I'm breathing. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Resist him. It's called resistance. Are you hearing me? The pain comes, you say, ah, it adds, ah, even if they take you to hospital on a stretcher, you say, ah, ah, even if they pronounce you dead, you come back and say, ah, but how many people can hold that tenacity? 
It's a person who are teaching faith. They fell sick and fell sick and fell sick. And then we taught faith. And I remember warning this person. I told him, you know what? Stop. I remember. Apostle him, I went to visit the same Christian. That I'd been speaking to just a couple of days ago. I entered this room and this person said, oh, no, Apostle, I'm walking out of this. I'm healed. I'm free. And then Apostle Emma goes to visit the same person. They don't know that I was there. And, and, and the same person tells Apostle Emma, you know, it's a matter of time. I'm going in a time. <laughs> Yet the same person was with me in the same room telling me that they're free. Apostle Emma gets in and they tell him, no, you're just, it's just a matter of time. I'll be gone soon. <sighs> I knew they were going to die. The disease didn't kill them. They could not bridle their body. They could not change and curb their entire nature. You see, let me explain what it means to curb your entire nature. Your nature is God kind. It's not human kind. When when the Bible speaks about curbing the entire nature, the Bible, it's not talking about it's talking about you learning to totally live in the eternal new creation regenerated life constantly. That's what it means to curb your nature. To curb your nature. To grind your spirit to break and bend to the nature you carry in God. Were you healed by his stripes? Yes. Get it in your system. Until HIV tells you, you know what? I can't kill you. I can't. I totally can't. I can't. I can't kill you. I just can't kill you. I can't kill you. I just can't kill you. I just can't kill you. I can't kill you. I can't kill you. I can't. And a, a disease tells you, I can't. I've given up. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Of course, the word of faith had many criticisms. Right? One fellow called Farah wrote and he said that it does not appeal to true orthodoxy, but yet it's not thoroughly heretical. It's in the middle. You can't say it's wrong totally. That means they see elements and Trojan horses and what they think is wrong. But do you know why they can't say it's wrong totally? Because they don't have a scripture that can disqualify it. The the scriptures they have that say it's not thoroughly heretical, they mean to say that there are questions in scripture that cannot explain it, but yet it also cannot be denied. For example, persecution. You understand? But I can answer them too. I can answer them too. Persecution is an inheritance. (laughs) He said a hundredfold. They shall inherit a hundredfold in this life and persecution. It, It is not, persecution is not supposed to be a problem. When the Bible says receive a hundredfold, it's not supposed to be a problem. It's supposed to be the sharpening, the sharpening edge of the sword. Are you hearing me? It's supposed to be the place where we enjoy. You understand? Where we, 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 it's like God testing you on what you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's like God letting, because persecutions are our, they are, they promote us. They edge us. They, they take us further. Are you hearing me? Trials come. And so many of these guys don't know how to deal when the trials come. No. Paul, Paul tells them. They just don't take it. Paul says, count it all but joy, brethren, when diverse trials and temptations. You understand? He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And, and, and the Bible says, hey, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Praise God. And the next verse, hey, hey, hey. but let patience have their perfect work that she may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. So why is it coming? Ah, maybe read it in the message. You'll understand it in the message better. Go back. Go back to verse 2. 1 to 2, let's read. 
Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. I, I, I want you to read it a certain way. I've not yet heard it in my ears. One, two, three, let's go. Did you hear that? When tests and challenges come at you from all sides, go on your knees and say, Who am I, God? That trials and tests are coming. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. And, and I'll explain you why. He says, you know. He didn't say you pray. He didn't say we expect. He doesn't even, God, he, he's not saying, you, you come from my end to know. No, you, you, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows off its true colors. Hallelujah, praise God. Praise God. You know. Tell your neighbor, you know. Tell your neighbor, I know what pressure does to me. But the doctor said you have high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you have high blood pressure <laughs> Woo! just celebrate and say my faith my faith my faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors I'm going to prove to you that I'm not hypertensive why? because hypertensive people die this way I'm not going to die of hypertension So for us, pressure and challenges, they bring out faith. You have to get to the level where even the devil fears to pressure you. He knows if you attack that woman, we are in trouble. It's like uh, somebody one time came to me and told me, you know what, every time I get dreams when I'm going back to the village, every time I get dreams when I'm going back to the village, every time I get dreams... But I'm going to go to the village. Of course, it's a spirit of regression. Spiritual, it's a spirit of regression. You understand? But I've never dreamt it. I've never dreamt when I'm in Maogola. I've never. Because Satan knows. They die, dream it. I will plant a church there. I will plant it quicker than I plan. He knows that. And I told him, I told him, Satan, you know people dream things going back in the village. Make me dream when I'm in a meet. Just bring it to sing. Do you make me dream when I'm in that trading center? You'll see fire. I'll put a church on you. So he even tells his devils, hey, 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 hey. don't he? tell your neighbor the word is nice. It is in your mouth. And Paul says, which we preach. That's what we are preaching. That's all we are telling you up to now. The word in your mouth and in your heart. That's what we are telling you. It's the most important thing. It does not matter what the doctor has said. What's in your mouth? It does not matter what you're going through. What is in your mouth? It does not matter what is in your financial life. What is in your heart? 
and in your mouth what is in your heart and in your mouth as we've believed have we spoken what is in your heart and in your mouth it, 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 let me tell you there's a man who is a hundred percent healthy from head to toe but his tongue and mouth tell you that man is gonna die and there's a man who is not clinically supposed to be alive but his mouth and heart tell you he will live a full life Kennedy Hagen had a dying heart. Right? John G. Lex had his tongues, his lungs, lungs collapsed. I mean, it didn't mean they were not tested. They were. But boy, they lived a full life. They lived a full life. He said, I will make your days full. He said, I will make your days full. Tell your neighbor, he will make my days full. I told people, if you know you have something, uh, an issue uh, that you're dealing with every morning, eh, he said these words are medicine, right? Do your prescription. Like the, like the doctor says two times three. You tell yourself in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, I'll be making the confession concerning this bacteria, this virus, this infection, this ma- money issue. You understand? You wake up in the morning, you, you take your medicine. Hallelujah. You, you wake up in the afternoon, you take your medicine. Praise God. You wake up in the evening, you take your medicine. They ask you, are you taking medicine? Yes, I am taking. <laughs> but what is the medicine? The medicine of the world. Praise God, somebody. You will live and not die. Your life will be full. Your finances will stop. Your marriage will be a success. Your relationship will be a success. God will help you. Word of faith. I can't fail. Check on the tell yourself. Tell yourself. I cannot fail. I don't fall. I don't fail. It's the word we preach. It's the word we preach. Tell your neighbor it's the word we preach. Yes. Hasharamando. I feel like getting in the ring now. The only challenge is he fears to fight me. He fears to fight me. He knows what I'll do. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Don't error in your tongue. Don't say anything wrong. Don't say anything wrong. I don't care what's not working. Don't say it. I don't care how things are bad. A person you don't understand. And then somebody calls crying for hours. Listen. Mastery. Get to the level. Where regardless of what happens. He has promised. That man is also able. To control his whole body. That is your health. And curb his entire nature. That is everything you are in God. But it begins with the body. Whether you're talking of weakness, what? Oh, I have a sexual issue, I have this issue, I have a drinking issue, I have a habit issue. All of that stuff can be dealt with when you learn the first issue. Get it right first. Perfect man. Fully developed character. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Get to your feet. Kura baba kosha braka baba bakosha kababa. Braza baka baba bakosha bakasha bakara baba. Zire bronda raba koshe bro ro 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 bo bo bo. I feel the anointing for the impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel the anointing of the impossible. I am going to release a certain anointing in just a few seconds from now. 
in just a few seconds from now i'm going to release a certain anointing don't come i'm not going to lay hands on you it's going to come where you are it's going to come where you are speak in other tongues i want to release something i feel mandated by god to release something and i'm going to do it in a very short while come on speak in tongues if you don't have tongues speak in a language you can say i will not fail my health is robust my finances are upward my marriage is okay my sight is con is controlled by the holy spirit my body won't fail my life won't fail my business won't fail my career won't fail come on speak 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 the righteousness of faith speaketh speak Come on, somebody. Speak. Life to what you're saying. Medicine to your bones. things say the craziest statement make them under your breath and confess them Cerebrosa. Take it higher. Lampa to my feet. Light to my path. It is you. Jesus treasure that I hold more than finest gold it is you Jesus it is you Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. 
soul. Your word is a lamp and to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your word is like a lamp on my lips. Your spirit is like water. My soul, your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your name is like a name to my lips. Your spirit is like water. To my soul, your word is a lamp, and to my feet, Jesus, I love you, I love you, you name is like a name. to my soul, your spirit is like water. My soul, your word is a love, and to my feet, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your name is like heaven on my lips, your spirit is like water. My soul, your word is like a lamp into my feet. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Your name is like a lamp. Your spirit is like water. I love your name is like honey your spirit like water your love and what is a love of my faith Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Hey. Oh, my. The spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a love to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your name is like a lamp. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a love upon my feet. Jesus, I love you. Somebody put up your hands in the air. Put up your hands in the air. You are the air. Put up your hands in the air. You are the air. Now listen to me. 
All right, you're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, I thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you because you died and rose again for me. You are the son of God who gave his life for me. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. God bless you.